Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 82. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. This psalm seems fairly obscure to us, and so we have to understand who it is the psalmist is talking about when God is speaking to a group and he says, in the midst of the gods he holds judgment. The word for gods is a word that is often translated as gods, Elohim. But sometimes we need to recognize that while it often refers to God, it can also refer to human rulers uh, as well. And I think that's what's in view here. He's speaking to those who hold positions of authority, those who are sit in judgment, judges in particular, but also it probably applies to anyone in a position of power. Uh, Jesus referred to this Psalm in the 10th chapter of John's gospel when he was having yet another argument with the religious leaders. Uh, it said they picked up stones again to stone him and Jesus answered them. I have shown you many good works from the Father, for which of them are you going to stone me? And they answered him, it is not for a good work that we're going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. And Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he who called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the son of God. In other words, he said that this scripture is referring to human beings as gods. And he is speaking particularly of those human beings who are in positions of authority, uh, judges and magistrates and rulers of, of whatever kind. The point of this Psalm is that God is going to hold those rulers accountable because they are not judging rightly. And so we see this in the Psalm. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? One of the things that we have to understand from scripture is that government is instituted among men because the world is fallen. Uh, in a perfect world, we might not need earthly kings. We would walk directly with the Lord our God and peace would reign over the earth and justice would be perfect. In fact, there would be no need for justice to handle the wicked because there wouldn't be any wickedness. But because of wickedness, we have government and the purpose of government is to restrain evil and to make sure that people are rightly defended in particular the poor and the defenseless, the fatherless, the afflicted, the destitute. Scripture shows that God's concern is always for those on the lower end of the spectrum. And that's something we would do well to consider. Somehow in this country, we've gotten it through our heads that if you're poor, it's a sign of moral deficiency, uh, when actually it just means that you're poor. And as those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to show special care and concern or the fatherless and the poor, the weak and the destitute. And so God is speaking to those in positions of authority. Give justice to the weak, rescue the weak and needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. We all know that all too often in our legal system, justice goes to the one who can afford the best attorney. It does not, it rarely comes down on the side of the weak and the powerless. And so, God declares of these human judges, they have neither knowledge nor understanding, they walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. And when there is immorality in government, 
when justice is handed out unevenly, when the scales are tipped towards those that are wealthy and powerful, it feels like the foundations of the earth are shaking because there's nothing on which you can rely. If you're not rich, you're out of luck. And so God declares to them, you are gods. In other words, you might be high and lifted up in status uh, in this world, but nevertheless, you shall die and fall like any prince. All humans are going to die. And that includes all those who are rulers in whatever position that they are. And we have to remember, and they have to remember, that they're going to have to answer to God for how they have handled their leadership, how they've handled their authority, and whether or not they carried out justice equally, and whether or not they were concerned in particular for the plight of the poor and the destitute. And so the psalmist finishes by saying, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. The comfort that we have in spite of rampant injustice and wild inequity in our society is that God is the righteous judge of all the earth. He will judge all things at the end of time. And we can be assured that he will get it right. That's why we don't take matters into our own hands. It's why we can afford to turn the other cheek and bless our enemies because we know that ultimately the judge of all the earth will handle things and he will get it right. And we can trust in that and bear up patiently even as we strive here on earth to build a society that more closely reflects the kingdom of heaven where the weak and the fatherless, the destitute and the poor are fully taken care of. God's blessings be upon you this day.